The Boys Crisis? What? Ironically, my focus on boys and men's issues started with my focus on women's issues. Um, I served on the board of the National Organization for Women in, 19, in the early 70s. They asked me to form men's groups and boys' groups, and as a result, that exposed me to men's issues, boys' issues, and my own issues. Okay. The, um, we'll look at the evidence for the boy crisis, the causes of it, and solutions. First, the evidence that I discovered when I did a decade of research for the boy crisis. Evidence is classic World of Warcraft. For example, suicide. When boys and girls are nine, it's equal. Between 10 and 14, it's twice as likely. I'm sorry, something happened there. When um, boys are nine, it's equal. When boys between 10 and 14, boys commit suicide twice as often. Wow. These slides are not working. They're, they should be automatically showing bars go up, but at any rate, um, um, boys between 15 and 19 commit suicide four times as often. There we go. Jesus. And boys between 20 and 24 commit suicide five times as often as girls. Wow. In the UK, in one year, there were more deaths by suicide than in I think, by the way, this makes a lot of sense. All wars since 1945 put together. Holy shit. There's a 700 percent increase in prison population since 1972. Prisons are basically centers for dad-deprived boys. Jesus. In just nine, 90 years, the female to male life expectancy gap has grown more than 400 percent. The UN finds that boys have fallen behind girls in every one of the largest 70 developed nations especially in reading and writing. By age 21... We ain't no read. I'll tell you that. Boys average 14,000 hours of gaming. Hold up! It only takes about a third of that time to get a bachelor's degree. What? Especially in reading and writing. By age 21... 21. Boys average 14,000 hours of gaming. It only takes about a third of that That's time. That's not that much, really, but yeah. Time to get a bachelor's degree. Yeah. Men's bachelor's, percentage of bachelor's degrees have declined from 57% to 42% in the past 50 years. The implications for the future of families is when women are ready to have children, female college graduates are not looking for male college dropouts, or as women say, just one more mouth to feed, or marrying down. Well, yeah, that's just the way it is. No, I mean, obviously this happens because back 50 years ago, 100 years ago, women didn't work in the workforce in the same way they do now. So now you have women competing with men for jobs, and so men aren't going to be able to get as many jobs. That's the way it is. And also, like, as a guy... There's like kind of a, uh, there's like a double-edged sword of being a, 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 like being a guy and a girl. It's, uh, I, I, like I've never been a girl before, right? Uh, except for that one time on stream, but like that was like a specific situation. I was only for like a couple of hours. Uh, I, I yeah, besides the power, right? Um, like as a girl, I think that society and like culture and like just biology values you at an innate level because you can have kids right and this makes sense because women are going to be more valuable than men in this situation because one dude can get 10 girls pregnant but one one woman can't have 10 kids at the same at the same rate right so like as a guy you don't have that innate intrinsic like uh unremovable value like, men just don't have that, especially young men. And so men create that value through cultivating skills and cultivating the, uh, you know, cultivating a, a perception of them, uh, a reputation, uh, integrity, like everything you want to say, like resources. And then, you know, the women that like that uh, get with those men. And this is the way it's been going for, I don't know, probably millions of years. So that's the way it is. So women at the same level, right? 
I don't think women get respected as much for like what their career is, not necessarily by a lot of guys. Like a lot of guys don't really care about what a girl's career is quite as much as, you know, how she's going to make as like a girlfriend or a wife or a mother or something like that. So, I, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of women who might not necessarily like that because, well, I mean, fuck, you know, if you care about, you know, like maybe you want to have kids in the future or whatever, but like you want to be seen as like, you know, an equal. And then the only guys care about, the only thing that guys care about is like, well, how many kids is, is you know, are we, we going to have? Uh, this could be seen as like diminutive, right? This is diminishing of like what they are as a person. So this is kind of like the dichotomy that like men and women exist in in society where men don't have any innate intrinsic value to them. They don't have, or they do have it, but it's much lower, right? Whereas women have a much higher intrinsic innate value, but at the same time, they don't necessarily have that scaling value that men do with resources and with reputation and money and value in general. Does that make sense? That's why I've never seen some of the guys who's women hook up with. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, there's definitely ugly dudes that get girlfriends. But, like, there's a lot of guys, and I think the reason why young guys kill themselves, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, they feel like they're not going to be one of those guys. Or that, yeah, it's basically, exactly, it's a late game build. Yeah, there's plenty, yeah, like, male, male characters are good in the late game, and female characters are good in, like, mid game. That's just the way it is. And, and I, I didn't program the game. I didn't code it this way. I didn't release these patch notes. That's just how it is. So it makes sense that somebody who's like, oh, warriors suck. Well, of course they suck. You're only level 33. You're only level 33. When you're 60, you're going to be top DPS, but you're not going to make it that far and you're going to quit the game. You think you're going to play a hunter? Oh, yeah. Have fun giving everybody aspect of the pack and being at the bottom of the meters when you get 60. That's just how it is. We scale. Yes. Guys scale. When will they allow level boosts on this? Let, let's go ahead and move on. What are the causes? There are a lot of causes of the boy crisis, but more than any other, I found that the boy crisis resides where dads do not reside. Oh, yeah. So the question is, why has the family... And this is why people like Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate are so popular, is because they're internet dads. And it, it, Joe Rogan, right? Uh, Elon Musk, it's kind of like that. But especially Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate, I think they really kind of fit that mold super well. Is they're like internet dads. It's because a lot of guys, you know, their dad is not around or their dad is a loser or something like that. So they don't really have any real sort of uh, male model to, to go off of, right? Their idea of being a real man is like, what, Arnold Schwarzenegger and like a uh, predator or something like that? Like, it, it's always like some weird romanticized version of some like hyper, like aggressive person. Yeah, John Cena, Rambo or something like that. On a part, and why have dads fallen out? As citizens of developed nations were able to survive, they wanted freedom. First, the freedom to be able to divorce. And children of divorce are often dad deprived. I was lucky, I wasn't. They also wanted, moms wanted options. So moms developed three options, to work full time, to have children full time, to do some combination of both. Yeah. Of course, dad, dads have three options too. They can work full time, uh, work full time, or uh, work full time. Well, they could also go to the store to get milk. That's that's a problem. The um, each year, forty-one percent of mothers have children without being married. Ooh. I don't want to make two caveats here. The few people work harder and are more overwhelmed than single moms. Yeah. And when, and many. I think it's single parents. Like if you're a dad and you're taking care of the kids and like you don't have the mom around, I think it's the same thing. Uh, I'm not sure necessarily if this is something that is uh, exclusive to women boys raised by single moms do well 
Clinton, Obama, Australia's current prime minister, Anthony Albanese, all were raised by single moms. However, the majority of children of single moms experience some level of dad deprivation. So the question is, that means deprivation of what? Of postponed gratification, of empathy, social skills, motivation, and identity. But also in- well, I think there's also, because like being a guy, like there's a lot of the part, like how you act around other guys is very different than the way you act around girls. That's just the truth, especially whenever you're younger. Like, you're, like, hitting each other on the shoulder, you're wrestling around, like, throwing shit at each other, throwing jokes at each other. You don't do that with girls, right? They don't, they, they don't think like that. But the reality is that, like, those ways that men can express themselves, or not men, like, boys, can express themselves and be boys, well, a lot of them are kind of, can be kind of bad, right? And especially in certain cases. Now, they're not always bad, but they're certainly seen as bad. So, you know, you look at it from the perspective of like a, a, a boy and everything that you like to do is wrong. You know, being, you know, a little bit rambunctious and violent. OK, well, now you've got detention, you know, talking really aggressively is that now you're in trouble. Now you've got a referral, you know, and all of this stuff. Yeah. So social norms. Yeah. Edgy jokes, stuff like that. Absolutely. Increase in depression, suicide and addiction to porn, mm -hmm. alcohol, drugs, oh, video, oh, oh. motivation, and identity, but also an increase in depression, suicide, and addiction to porn, alcohol, drugs, video games. Yep, there it is. Dad-deprived boys are oh, yeah. boys who hurt, and dad-deprived boys hurt us. They are much more likely to commit crimes. Oh, yeah. It's like insane They're much ratio. more likely to deal drugs, bully, and mass shootings, especially in schools, are almost always by dad-deprived boys. And they're almost always by guys, too. Like, almost all of these mass shooters are guys. Like, 90% plus are guys. Boys who hurt us are boys who hurt. Anger is vulnerabilities mask. Yep. So let's move to solutions. If the children who are dad deprived are part of the problem, the children who are dad enriched are part of the solution. But the question then is why? What is there about dads and dad style parenting that enriches children? First is boundary enforcement versus boundary setting. Moms do set earlier bedtimes but kids under dad's supervision get to bed earlier. The difference, dad's boundary enforcement. Yeah, yeah, basically what he's saying is like, you don't fuck around because your dad will get really pissed and your mom's like, ah, it's whatever, right? It's just, it's true. That's the way it was for me. Absolutely. One result, postpone yeah. gratification. Postpone gratification is the single biggest predictor of Success or Sir, please. No, no. Sir, please. Oops, hey, Daisy. Pull over the car. Pull it over now. Pull over the car. I'm not going to ask you again. I can't see the video, but I'll assume it was funny. <laughs> uh, we skipped to that slide a little sooner, but um, postponed gratification is a single uh, it was big. probably just some joke with like a guy with predictor a predictor of success or failure. It did, it, by the way, it did, if you only hear the audio, it did he, it sound like the guy was beating the shit out of the baby, right? It, it, it did absolutely sound like that. Children can't postpone gratification, they can't achieve, they end up disrespecting mm -hmm. themselves, and they are rejected by others. Dad-style parenting, like roughhousing and the teasing that you just saw here, also build bonds between dads and children. So... Let's take it, let's do an anatomy of roughhousing, for example, and how roughhousing, boundary enforcement, and this bond building create um, empathy, postponed gratification, and social skills. The unconscious dynamics of roughhousing is that roughhousing is like a treat. It creates a bond, and kids obey because they want the treat, just like doggies obey because they want the treat. Yep. As they do this roughhousing with boundary enforcement, once the kids know that they will um, that they will stop the roughhousing, the roughhousing will be stopped. If it gets too rough, 
the kids have to be sensitive to what might hurt their siblings. This plants the seed of empathy. Mm -hmm. Instead of the immediate gratification of, of winning, um, the um, of winning by being aggressive, the children have to learn postponed gratification of being assertive versus aggressive, um, and the assertiveness allows them to bring uh, to develop social skills. Uh, and the children who are assertive develop more friends, but and less aggressive. Well, yeah, it's it's hard to know, like especially if you don't have like any boundaries for it, to like what's what's assertive and what's just aggressive. No, they're not. Men are alienated by modern society. Being a man in modern society makes you the enemy to almost every activist group out there. Well, the reality is that a lot of people that are, it, it's okay to say that like. I think it's more socially acceptable to say a lot of negative things about men collectively. And I think that's a problem. It's a massive problem. Because I think a lot of people have like, no, it, it's true. It happens all the time. Incel? I don't think this is really incel, is it? I mean, I don't think that's incel at all. Yeah, men aren't a monolith, exactly develop more friends, less isolation, mm -hmm. and depression. These children are not, not dad-deprived, they're dad-enriched. The results? Dad-enriched children uh, tend to be warmer, more mature, more independent, more empathetic, mm -hmm. and have a higher degree of self-esteem. So the question then becomes, how do we implement this? If there has to be a divorce, there must be, I have found in my research, four must-dos. There must be equal shared parenting. Parents must live in a, a maximum of 20 minutes drive time from each other. No bad-mouthing that the children can overhear or detect. And their needs- My parents talk shit about each other all the time. But yeah, I mean, that, that one, yeah, did not happen. Needs to be constant couples communication yeah. counseling of at They're least divorced. once a month. To um, what can ARC do? They got along. One of the but things they I believe about we can do on. is do what they did in Florida, which is to align dad and rich parenting with the goals of all political parties to the degree that in Florida, um, by learning about the importance of dad involvement and what dads need to, to become involved, both political parties passed two out of three bills unanimously. Wow. Which in this culture is just about unheard of. Yeah. When men are told they are needed, um, they are willing to die so others might live. Today, we need fewer men, fortunately, to kill and be killed. Yeah. We need more men to love and be loved. Children need a dad's time more than they need a dad's dime. I can see that. Sure. We need to revive vocational education. Dads, dad-deprived boys do much worse academically, but they do respond well to vocational education, which gives them a sense of achievement and purpose and therefore respect. I think that's like basically like trade skills, right? Like uh, electrician, plumber, mechanic. In Japan, 99.5% of vocational education graduates are, um, get jobs. We need to introduce boys to the caring professions and prepare for them like we prepared women for the STEM professions. Of 23 communication skills that I teach, the most important is how to overcome the Achilles heel of all human beings, our inability to handle personal criticism without becoming defensive. Yeah. I think ARC could make a great deal of um, improvement in the world if we encourage this type of training for both elementary school students and their parents. It is the most important, vital, single step we can take toward reviving both our family and our democracy. Sure. We need to apply this to checks and balance parenting. Yeah, sure. <laughs> never going to happen? How do you do that? I don't know. Uh, sad but true. <laughs> uh, in conclusion, 
We, need, we don't need a women's movement blaming men, nor a men's movement blaming women. We and that's exactly what we have. That's a that's a hundred percent what it is. That that's what the problem is. Is that like you go and you look at the uh, a, a lot of these like especially whenever a guy gets accused of something. All the time, there's girls that are down below that, like, they put themselves in the girl who says that the guy did the thing. They say, oh, well, this could have happened to me. I understand how you feel. I just categorically agree with you because, you know, uh, you know, I can put myself in your situation. And then you also have guys that basically view, like, women as the main problem in their life. And that's what it is, generalized more. Oh, it is absolutely a generalization. Of course, you, you, you can't talk about two groups of people without generalizing. Like, th that's the way it goes. But yeah, I mean, look at Depp and Amber Heard. Yeah, of course, right? And so I think this is the problem, is that most people have, like, a very toxic relationship with the other gender for different reasons, right? That could be, you know, their mom or dad was an asshole, or they had, like, a, a girlfriend or boyfriend that was a piece of shit for some reason or another. But just in general, this happens with a lot. A massive movement hating men, a small movement hating women. I think that there's a lot of people out there that hate women. Like, I think it's actually quite popular. Uh, it's, uh, it hasn't fallen off. We need a gender liberation movement freeing both sexes from the rigid roles of the past to more flexible roles, responsibilities, mm -hmm. and freedoms for our future. For boys and men, that starts with redefining power. Thank you. With redefining power. Real power is not about being a human doing. It's about being a human being. Okay. I, I don't know really what that means. A man who joined one of my men's groups shared with me that the success of his business had led to his failure as a dad and as a husband. Yeah, probably. That he felt the business he owned actually owned him. But the men's group helped That happens him. with a lot of people in their jobs. Yeah, absolutely. And like guys feel like they have to work a lot. And this is just really what happens is that you look at it from his perspective and like, you know, he's trying to take care of his kids. He's trying to take care of, you know, his wife or whatever. And like, she's not working because she's having kids. So he kind of has to do this. But in terms of doing it, whenever he does do it, he loses time with his kids and there's a problem. Helped him create his own picture. It's for him, his yeah. picture was wanting to give up his business for just five years to raise his son that he had neglected to raise when he, in his first marriage and his first son. He told me it was the best decision of his life, in, in essence, to balance being a human doing with being a human being. That man was John Lennon. Men define it, redefining the meaning of power is our best gift not only to ourselves but also to our sons and to our daughters who love them we are all in the same family boat when only one sex wins both sexes lose thank you rich people being able to be parents yeah the thing is like john lennon's a rich dude he's got a bunch of money and he can afford to take time off there's a lot of other guys that can't do that and like as a guy, you're expected to do all these things and then there's a lot of expectations on you on top of that. So like, it's not like you can just take a bunch of time off and it's completely okay and it's whatever. Uh, John Lennon's son's into NFTs or whatever, right? He was an awful dad. Well, I'm not sure whether he was or not, but like all I'm saying is this, here's the video right here. And uh, I, I do think guys feel increasingly more alienated by society. I think also the problem is because people aren't properly socialized and they don't know how to interact with like a girl or something like and I see this all the time right is that guys will do or say things that are just like so incredibly like fucking weird to like a, 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 like a girl right like they'll like say something like super inappropriate or like super creepy and whenever you say hey don't say that don't act like that well, their response is that, well, I guess I just won't talk to women at all. Because a lot of guys don't really know where that line is. And 
having a conversation about where that line is is uncomfortable for guys to have because it makes them feel insecure. And so this is what the problem is. And so then the guys just completely don't talk to anybody else and they become incels. Like, that's what happens. Let me try. Yeah, I think you have anyone in particular. Well, I think there's a lot of people like this. It's extremely common. Yeah, we need better uh, real mo role models. Yes, I, I agree with that. Doesn't really help in social me when the media constantly blame you for stuff you didn't do and preach that you're evil. I think that there are instances of that, right? There's always the idea of toxic masculinity, but you never hear about toxic fin uh, like phenonymity. I, I don't really know how to say the word, but you know, like basically like toxic things that women do as well. And so whenever you have an imbalance like that. And, like, everybody knows that women can be massively toxic. Like, and it's not because women are fundamentally toxic. People are toxic, right? But whenever you're only talking about one aspect of it and not the other, it's not a surprise that the people that are constantly being, like, demonized and viewed as, like, bad or, like, evil uh, are, are going to have a negative reaction to that. Yeah, un untrue. Women are perfect. Oh, for sure. You also hear way too rarely about positive masculinity. Well, I think that whenever you do hear about positive masculinity, it's always contextualized around, oh, a woman could have also done this as well. Which is like kind of like a weird, like I feel like that's always like the, uh, the, the, the subtext of that kind of stuff. Yeah, and uh, toxic femininity is called Karen's. Yeah, exactly. I agree, but there isn't, uh, someone said, hey, handsome, but hey, ugly is not. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that generally... Like, I've seen a lot of these people that have talked about, oh, well, I don't know how to act around other people, and, you know, like, uh, well, you know, if you just say hi to a girl, you know, the next thing you know, you're going to get written up to HR. Whenever I actually see these situations in action, and I see what really happens, I don't think that there's any real question. I'm sure there are gray areas, but I don't think that there's nearly as much gray area as people will have you believe. I think that there's just a lot of bad actors and people who don't know how to act. And, like, they're, like, you know, basically, if you say no to somebody, then they just keep asking you and stuff like that. I've seen a lot of that stuff. And people don't really talk about that at all because it's not, uh, it's not as compelling. Uh, there's barely any vacation time or leave for the U.S. compared to other countries. Yeah. I agree. The written rules don't cover it. Well, I think that the, the rules just, people don't understand the rules because they're not well socialized. Because, again, all they're doing is spending all day, every day, playing video games. So they don't really have these normal social interactions. Like, for example, whenever you were a kid, if you're around my age, like, you would have to deal with, like, a person's parents very regularly. You call their house and their parent picks up the phone. So, like, you get in the habit of interacting with other adults, even as a kid. And that's a very interesting thing to have happen. It's not something that's, like, the same as you act with, like, another kid. And you have all these different forms of socialization that just don't exist anymore. Like certain types of assertiveness, like calling somebody on the phone or going to somebody's house. These things are no longer needed in society because, you know, we effectively like, uh, you know, min max them out of society. And because of that, well, guess what? People don't do that stuff anymore. And I think there's a negative effect of that. Women's sexual preferences are pretty stupid. Well, everybody has a right to be sexually attracted to whatever they want to. I mean, as long as it's, like, illegal, right? I mean, uh, I'm sure there's, like, extreme examples I don't really want to talk about. But, I mean, like, it, it doesn't matter. Like, somebody is entitled to have stupid sexual preferences, right? Talking about that with friends. We had, like, an optimal route to see who's going to go home and go out to play. Yeah. Uh, it's unrelated. Yeah, I think it is. So, like, yeah, a lot of kids just don't know how to act. Like, I remember seeing, like, there was this one tweet. Uh, this is, like, kind of, like, it's not really a big deal. But, like, there's a tweet of a, this, like, girl, and she was pretty hot. And she was in, like, a bathtub hiding. And, like, the, the text of the tweet was, When the DoorDash driver leaves the food at your house, but they ring the doorbell. And there's just, like, such a heightened sense of, like, social anxiety. And I think the reason for that is because uh, the euphoria shit, I don't know. Uh, but And it had like, bro, like I'm telling you, it had like 30, 20,000 likes. It had a lot. Uh, and she was like hiding in a bathtub. Like it wasn't like this wasn't some kind of like weird sexual thing. It was like some hiding from like a serial killer type thing. So. 
even like very simple interactions are very hard for people to have because a lot of the kind of uh, like friction in, in like uh, the social friction that used to exist doesn't exist anymore. That's really what it is. Like you don't have any of those other types of social friction. So because people don't have any other form of social friction, then whenever they run into it, even in the slightest way, it's extremely stressful for them. Low versus high trust societies. I think that's a factor, but that's not the main reason. I know people that can't open the door to get their pizza because of their social anxiety. Yeah, and it's just, it, it's very sad that people are like that now, but I think it's extremely common. Same thing with many people not knowing their neighbors anymore. Yeah. It's like growing up, like here, here's a good good way to look at it. Growing up, did you know your neighbors? Like whenever you were 10 years old, did you know everybody else's name, like first name that was like living around you, right? Yes. Okay, how many of you guys know everybody's first name living around you right now? No. That's massive. That is a massive fucking change. That is huge. Yes, also their phone numbers. Yeah, everything like that. And uh, why is first name such a big deal in the U.S.? Community is so important. No wonder it's popular. Yeah, and like, so for example, like antisocial behavior, right? Like not keeping your, uh, you know, your lawn clean or like uh, basically like fucking up your house. A person has an added reason to not fuck up their house and not ruin their house and, like, let their lawn get really high or, you know, throw garbage everywhere. And, like, obviously, I wonder who we're talking about here. Um, and, uh, you know, again, like, the person, the, the, the side of the house that I threw all my garbage out on was the side that the neighbor that I didn't like lived on. Fuck him, by the way. And uh, he's gone now. And uh, anyway... But I, I wouldn't do that if it was, like, next to, like, my neighbors that I liked a lot more, right? Because, like, there's a sense of, like, shared accountability. And people don't like that because there is, like, a negative interaction there. There's, like, a negative aspect to it. And because of the negative aspect, people don't want to have it at all. And I think that the pendulum has swung quite a lot. And now people are so, like, social interaction in, in like, you know, normal social interaction is such an abstract that people don't have any experience with it or culture with it. Does that make sense? So because, like, people don't have, like, any normal social friction in their life, well, then they're never going to be able to act the right way. Because they don't have any, uh, they don't have any experience acting the right way. No, elaborate on abstract culture. Well, people always hear about how they're supposed to act. But, like, oftentimes the people who are telling you how you're supposed to act on the internet, these people you wouldn't let alone with your kids, okay? Like, these are fucking weirdos. And so you have these losers on the internet that are constantly trying to explain the rules of confrontation in real life. Meanwhile, they're absolute fucking psychos. They're weirdos. They don't know how to act. Like, how many people like that, that are like this, and then, like, their own personal life gets revealed, and they're even more fucked up than the people that they're trying to preach to? I mean, fuck, even preachers are like that, right? There's, like, some preacher, oh, I don't like gay people, and then you find them with gay guys. Uh, that's it. So I think that's also a huge problem. There's a lot of false idols, false gods. Most of the time, uh, psychopaths are the best at stuff like that? Oh, for sure. People living on social media trying to explain real-life confrontation? Yeah, I think that's what happens. I had a bad neighbor who used to break our football whenever we were playing around, and we used to throw dog shit in his yard at night. Yeah, those are the good days. And I think that really, like, we don't have any of those interactions anymore because there are negative outcomes. And the negative outcomes of that make people willing to get rid of all of it. And I think that's what ends up happening.